The Fairy Fox of Bossier by Iron Morton. What seems like a long time ago, and a long time since it was, my father and I set off deep into the forest of Bossier to seek wood. Winter was fast approaching, with blinding snow soon to come, and wood was needed for many things. I remember Mother standing over her large cooking pot. His was her custom, carefully spicing his hot water with a little of this and a little of that. Before we left, Mother gave us one warning, solacing any promise we might make. Do not be late for dinner. So off we trotted, pushing our rickety cart forward, leaving Mother alone in a solitary state of mind and house with an air of importance tempered by self-sufficiency. During the journey, Father made regular talk about a place once chanced upon where large trees dropped their limbs without care. Easy gathering for us, he said, and in this way we traveled through thickly wooded areas, having little sunlight guide us, with our rickety cart jolting across rough forest grounds. Thus each time the spot sought was said to be a bit further up the way, yet never was. Soon we were overcome by weariness and sat down to rest, muttering to ourselves with lips partly closed. Traditional forest noise burrowed the woodland proper and then mysteriously hushed. Our ears heard not a sound. Even the short, sharp tweets of treetop birds were silent. Then unexpected music swelled our senses with harps, flutes, fiddles, and the likes. The sun was fast sinking behind silvery shreds of dark shadows, and not any wood had been found. We both knew Mother would not understand our, our uncertainty in spite of our efforts. Suddenly, a wide berth of emerald-colored grass appeared, never seen, loomed beneath our feet from an open door within a giant, majestic tree. We sprung from the ground upward, pushing our cart aside, and took thoughtlessly through its opening. Where, arriving on the other side, afraid to say a word, we became absolutely still. Inside were all manner of ancient creatures. There were fairies flapping wings of night mist, imps, elves, leprechauns, and sprits huddled among and dancing with gnomes. Some were known for their good deeds. Others were not. All mighty beings able to give mortals their heart's desire, but tonight simply having fun together a brethren of living magical energy, sharing common fellowship with wings beating and feet stumping to endless dance, bringing father and son to the edge of frenzy. Charm pleases, these magical tunes are called, affecting men, animals, and plants alike. By the time the music stopped, everyone turned to us, asking when did we arrive and who invited us. We could only utter, the music was upon us, sounding loudly. No one laughed or showed displeasure. Many nodded, knowing the spell work of their tunes cannot be shaken off. Then one moved along smoothly, evenly, and easily forward, revealing our fate. No harm will come to you here, said she, clad in a cloth of enchantment. Her name was Gaze, and she was steadfast beauty whenever appearing. Where are we exactly, asked Father in a humble tone. You are in the realm of everlasting, said Gaze, where short-lived mortals such as yourselves will not fade until the last day of judgment takes us all. This is a glorious land where nothing is wanted that is not needed. Here we celebrate every moment and all can. Here there is no strife. Albeit our lives are quite happy and contented, without sorrow or complaint. Though you mortals who enter this land for whatever reason, are destined to be our guest forever, be it a day, year, a lifetime. While in this room, for any pause instant, know this, the life you once recognized will have changed. To leave will cause you great pain, setting you apart and separate from others' love who will have aged or died. So proclaim your new beginning, except do not eat our food unless prepared by myself. It is our useful account that mortals cannot digest the magical ingredients needed by us for nourishment. To do so will hasten their last hours of life. 
With that said, she vanished in the same way as a light, gentle wind, simply gone. Father wailed and hollered with a stirring heart as I watched speechless. No, no, we finally shouted in one breath. We cannot willfully remain. Mother will think we are dead. Father pleaded, his eyes brimming with tears to an empty space, occupied by nothing and no one. Night never showed its mouth and everlasting. The only weather I had was cheerful, beaming sunshine. All food provided was to our liking, and once eaten or drank, replaced itself, being always kept whole. We never knew hunger, thirst, or sickness in this kingdom of forever. Anyone drained of strength, energy, or power of endurance stopped to rest or sleep regardless of ongoing celebrations. Sleeping quarters, every time, at all times, appeared where needed. Still, we were not happy or contented, thinking of a long, comfortable life, absent of mother sharing in whatever was to come. I guess father's plea did not fall upon vacant ears. Soon, thereabout afterward, in what felt like a week passing, gaze in the most open-hearted manner appeared to us. She popped like corn, explaining how mortal time in, it, in its general fleeing use does not cannot fit the blossom lifespan of the never-ending ones. For the real test of her case, she magically whisked us to the door of passage, whereby commanding it to open. She spoke in low whispers with sympathy. Ten years of your time has passed since last we met. Behold, to our amazement, there was our cart much worn by age and worse than in value deteriorating. See that, said she, it is what does happen to all your kind, animals and plants, in the mortal world outside our mighty door. It is the order of things. Considerable misery tightly gripped our hearts. We roared off something between a growl and a yell. Alas, all is not lost, remarked Gaze, calming us down. There is one able to act upon your cause. How is this, asked Father? Are not your power, powers sufficient? With sorrow, no doubt of it, no express gaze. The one I speak of is careful to right wrongs made in our name through mishaps. Unlike we hear, he is not bound by past, present, or future events. Ageless is he with abilities beyond recollections. Nothing fails which is undertaken by this one. He will know how the vibrant music brought you here against your will to decide and of the powerful fear of never seeing a loved one again. Skillful as he had many faces and shapes in countless places where our kind is found. When all is spoken among the likes of us, he is known as the fairy fox of Bosia. We all follow his word. Saying no more gaze was gone like a sudden burst in wind. And so were we. Faster than thought of one's patience, we were ferried through the door of passage by twirling winds reversed. A summer sun was glowing when awakening completely bewildered, not certain of what to do or of our whereabouts we were. Dreamy eyes stretched wide looking closely from corner to corner to determine if it was really home. A gladness of noise touched us by way of mother's loving voice, letting us know our morning meal was ready. She showed no signs of declining appearance or memory that we ever left. The one difference discovered was our rickety cart restored, except now lapping over with wood gathered not by us. We never met the fairy fox of Bossier, to our knowing, although present outcome told otherwise. Unlike the everlasting ones, we short-lived mortals have come to know that love is a glorious value they can never possess and we can never outgrow. So in the end, we too live forever. This podcast is brought to you by confettipark.com.